All right. Hello, everyone. This is where the learning starts. The previous video was just so we could get to this point and start making cool stuff. So we're going to begin with just two concepts, nouns and verbs. In the English language, you have nouns. They are person, place, thing. And you have verbs. These are the actions that nouns perform. So in programming, you have the same concepts. And you'll find this in every programming language. Now we're dealing with C++, so let's, let's look at how these two concepts are expressed in C++. Nouns are called objects in C++. And objects have names, which are called identifiers, or they're sometimes referred to as symbols. And this is important because a lot of the times when you're beginning, you'll see error messages that are like undefined identifier or undefined symbol. Now, the counterpart to this is that objects perform actions, and these actions are called functions. Other languages call them methods, but the concept is the same, an action that an object performs. Let's look at an example. All right, this one's going to be super simple. Okay, int my age equals zero. We're going to ignore the int part for right now and just try to find the noun and the verb. Okay. Do you see where the noun is? It's this text right here. This is the noun. This is the named object. Now, do you see where the verb is? The verb is the equal sign. The equal sign is the action that is being formed. Let me use a different color just to make that easier to see. Oh, that's even worse. We'll do green. Okay. So here's the name. This is our noun. This is our object. Here's the action. This is the verb. This is the function that gets called right here. When we get a bit more knowledge, I'll explain what actually happens when an equal sign is encountered by the compiler. Okay, let's do another one. Okay. We'll ignore this float part for right now. Um, now, do you see the noun? Uh, let me qualify that a little more. Do you see the nouns plural? That's right, there are multiple objects being used here. Uh, reading left to right, the first one is my height. This is object number one. Okay. And then the next one is, do you have any ideas? It's this guy, lower body. All right, that's an object, that's a, that's a noun. Okay, and then the next one is upper body. Okay. Those are our objects that are getting, they're having actions performed on them. Okay, now how many actions are there? Well, we already know from the previous example that the first action is the equal sign. Okay. Now, what else is there? Well, this plus is, an, is a verb, right? You're adding two things together, so that's another action. Okay, and then are there any others? This get, the term get, that's an action. I want to get something, so I'm going to go get it. That's, an, that's a noun. I mean, that's a verb right there. That's an action. So that means this get length is an action, okay? Which also means that over here, get length again is also an action. All right, so how many, now, how many objects do we have and how many functions do we have in this? So here's one object, two object, oop, two object, and three objects. And then how many actions do we have? We have one, two, three, four, four actions. So this brings up an interesting point in that, what order do these actions happen in? So before the equals sign action can happen, we have to know what's on this side of the equal sign. How do we figure that out? Well, the first thing we have to do is, uh, we see that the first thing that gets done is we're adding this part with this part. So this is the first action that gets called. But before we can figure that out, we have to figure out what we're actually adding together. So to do that, we have to figure out what this value is. So how do we figure out what this is? Well, this is a function and functions need to be called. So this is going to return a value and that's what the action does. So the first thing that we have to do 
is go through this order of execution. Number one is we get the lower body's length, okay? Then we need to do that same thing again, but with the upper body's length. Now what comes next? Uh, we do number three, which is adding them together, right? So add one. And then number four is we assign the result to my height, okay? Those are our four actions. Now, this brings up a good opportunity to look at how this syntax is expressed. If you notice that the first one is get the lower body's length, okay? Let me just get rid of this stuff right here. So if we look at this symbol, look how it is expressed as lower, oops, lower body dot get length parentheses. Now in C++ and in many other languages, you first supply the object that you want to perform an action by typing its identifier. Then you type a dot or you type an arrow, but we'll get to that. Uh, the arrow operator looks like this. You type the identifier, then you type a dot or an arrow, and then you type the name of the action that you wanted to perform. And then you use the two parentheses to indicate that you're calling it. This is the call operator. Um, I'll get into the, the whole idea of operators in a later video. Now, the names of actions available to an object are limited to what is defined for that object. So this is a good place to stop and review what we've covered here before we get into the process of defining objects. We'll also practice how to identify the names or nouns and objects and verbs and actions and functions in some of the code that appeared in the Juice project that we created in the starting from scratch video. So the first thing that we went over was being able to see where is the noun or object when we're looking at a line of code, a very simple example, and then looking to try to find where is the action that is being performed, right? Here's an action, here's an action, here's an action, right? Here's an object, here's an object. And we also learned that this whole line right here it looks like it's one long, one single statement, but it's actually four different actions being performed on three different objects. So this is a, um, let's pull up some of that code from our juice project and uh, see what, um, see if we can identify some things that are happening there. Okay, so if you remember at the end of the previous video, we changed this color to red, all right? So I'm gonna just focus on this function right here, and I'm only gonna focus on these four lines in particular, all right? Because this introduces a couple new concepts. All right, so what's going on here? This looks pretty complicated, okay? So the first thing to look at is where do we see dots? Because dots indicate that we're about to perform an action and the thing on the left side of the dot is the name of it, okay? Now, just as a caveat, sometimes uh, depending on what gets returned from a function, which I will cover being, I will cover how functions can return values and how they can sometimes not return values in a later video. Um, but just take it with a grain of sand right now that if, even if you don't see the name of it, it is an action being performed on an object. Okay. So let's dig in here. All right. Where, let's look at this first line. Okay. All right, so we have a dot right here, which means this G is the name of something, okay? So we'll just highlight that. This is a name, okay? Now, what's the action that's being performed? This is the action, because it's on the right side of it, and we got parentheses, okay? Now, we can do the same thing here. Um, we can see that there's a dot right here, but this is confusing because we have... This looks like it's a function, you know, because it's got these parentheses, but there's nothing. What is it being called on? Okay, in a little bit of a later video, I'll explain the concept of this, but before, before we do that, I have to explain how objects are defined. Just know that this is a function being called, 
right? And it's being called on an object, but we don't have that object available to us yet in our you know, current understanding of C++. Okay. This is another object right here. I mean, this is another function right here. Okay. Right. It's coming after a dot. So we know that it's going to be, it's an action being performed on some object that's being returned by this function here. Okay. This right here, this super long thing, this is a name. Okay. So we've got name, action, 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 name. All right. That wasn't so bad. Let's do a couple more. All right. We have our same name right here. Here's our action. Okay. This is, this is, um, this is a function. Okay. It's a special type of function, but it is a function. And this is, it's not a name like this or like this. It's not a name like this G or this resizable window background color ID is, but it is a name. And I'll explain later what this is. Okay, we can do the same thing for this line. Here's our name, right? Here's our action. And then here's our, here's another name. Okay. Same thing for this last line. Here's a name. Here's our action. Here's a name. This is a function. Okay, so this is an action. And then this is another name. And then this is also a special type of name. Oh, I gave this the wrong color. Okay. So we made it through just bare bones. If we're just looking at random code, we know that we're able to identify what it is, if it's a noun or if it's a verb, if it's an object or if it's a function. All right. So when we get into more complicated stuff, like uh, if we go to main right here, click on main. All right. What's happening here with this line? Well, we know that main window, that's a name. This reset right here, that's a function. Uh, this is a function. And this is a function. We can go a little bit further. Here's a name. Here's an action right there with the equal sign. This is just an action, right? Because there's no, there's no dot next to it. But if you remember that actions are things that they have this, uh, they're followed by two parentheses, the callable, the, uh, callable operator. Same thing going on here. This is an action, right? This is a type of a name. It's a special type. This is another action. This is an action. This is a name. Here's an action, an action, 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 name. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we'll stop there. And then in the next video, we'll explain how we go about actually creating custom types and specialize and specifying custom behavior.